that is fall panicum. It's a summer annual uh, grassy weed that, once again, we have in, in Maryland. Uh, what you're seeing is the uh, flower, the inflorescence. It's a very open panicle type inflorescence with the uh, fall panicum. However, overall growth characteristic is more of a bunch type growth characteristic. It will, uh, because of the size of the plant, may lay down somewhat, uh, and we may see you know some type of um, you know, just overall shoot growth uh, coming up. Uh, over here, we can see uh, inner node node so that we can get this kind of elongation and we get fairly large plants because of the inner node elongation occurring to uh, the fall panicle. It's a coarse textured uh, warm season type grass um, that we have, or once again a summer annual grass that becomes quite noticeable uh, when it gets into any kind of a, say, turf grass uh, stand area to it. And uh, probably the other thing too, late in the summer, as a plant gets some, a lot of maturity, you can see these swollen nodes that would be characteristic of fall panicum. The genus species for fall panicum is uh, Panicum dichotomiflorum. The legal fall panicum is described as um, membranous, fused at the base, and normally when that is described, you'll see the upper portion of the uh, legal kind of shredded. Some people might refer to it as uh, hair-like, but uh, once again, a fairly noticeable uh, legal. Once again, it's a fairly big plant, so the legal to me is very very easy to, to look at and identify. Uh, the legule also reminds me of the foxtail legules and um, just in telling them apart, uh, the other thing I typically would want to look at would be the leaf blade on the fall panicum. And normally if you have a decent young leaf blade you'll see a white midrib where that won't be the case for the foxtail. The example we have is a paspalum and in, in Maryland we can have a couple of different types of paspalum, field paspalum, uh, is one of the species. Another species is known as uh, Dallas grass. Uh, one of the things uh, that's characteristic of both of the plants is that they tend to be coarse textured and then they have a bunch type growth characteristic. So these are a warm season perennial uh, plant. And if you get in a lawn area, you're not going to be able to selectively take it out with, say, you know, a pre emergent crabgrass control product. So some of them may look like a um, you know, crabgrass plant as far as their um, coarse leaf texture, but once again, it's a warm season perennial. With the field paspalum and also with our Dallas grass, uh, one of the characteristics is the, just the leaf renation. And so what you'll find with these samples will be rolled leaf renation. So with field paspalum, the legule has been described as a membranous legule um, that might be about a half millimeter to millimeter in height. But the other characteristic thing with uh, this sample with field paspalum is just the presence of a lot of hair on the sheath and then as you can see it kind of goes up on the leaf blade and to me that's very very distinctive for this species. Field paspalum, uh, this particular species, one of the things that's to me real characteristic is just the presence of a lot of hair uh, that's going to be present on the sheath and then as you go up the leaf blade uh, you'll see hair running up the margins of the leaf blade. Um, so that to me is a good characteristic or vegetative trait for field past. Now all the past palums to me have a very distinctive type of uh, inflorescence where we have these individual flowers that are sitting up on uh, the rachis and I guess in some of the uh, texts they talk about it being more of a racine meaning that there would be a short pedestal to which the uh, individual spikelets are attached to the rachis but um, just very very characteristic type of a flower for the uh, paspalum. The sample that we have here is quack grass. It's known as agropyrin uh, repens. It's a cool season perennial type grass. Uh, usually, you know, where I see it quite active is uh, in the spring of the year and in the fall of the year. And, and during the summer, it's not um, that active. It is a rhizominous type of turf grass, so you should see a lot of rhizomes that are associated with the uh, quack grass. If it does get into an area of uh, established turf, it is <clears throat> a difficult one to control because it is a perennial uh, cool season grass. The leaf renation of quack grass is a rolled leaf renation. It's once again similar in that tall fescue's roll. These two plants, if you see them out in the field, look very similar, a similar uh, leaf texture with regards to kind of being more of a coarse textured grass. Both of them are rolled. Example here with quack grass, what's really distinctive uh, is just the presence of clasping oracles. Okay, the sample that we're looking at is orchard grass. It's a Daclis glomerata. 
It's a, a coarse textured grass. It's a lighter green color. Uh, once again, that really allows it to stand out in a lawn area. And it's a, a bunch type uh, growth characteristic to it. So uh, what I've noticed is in the spring of the year, if you have this in a tall fescue lawn, this will be actively growing. Um, and then when you mow, uh, you come back the next week and this is you know, much taller than, than the tall fescue. So once again, because of its growth characteristic, its coarse texture, and lighter green color, it does stick out in a tall fescue or Kentucky bluegrass lawn situation. The, the legume of orchard grass is considered to be a membranous, uh, relatively large uh, legume, and once again, it's important identifying it as orchard the, grass. The uh, characteristic of the folded leaf formation is um, an important trait, and determining whether it's folded or rolled, normally what I like to do is look at the youngest leaf, which is coming towards the center of the plant. And what you want to do is look as the blade actually is emerging to determine whether it's fold or rolled. And for our orchard grass, it's a folded leaf formation. And that here is Japanese still grass. It's uh, one that, at least in certain areas, it's become uh, much more noticeable. It is considered to be an invasive species, um, supposedly coming from uh, packing material uh, from China um, that got introduced here in the U.S. back uh, about 1918. The, um, some of the characteristics is that as the plant ages, you'll see a lot of stolen type production. Um, it also will begin to produce a seed hit or flower uh, right here. And uh, it is a summer annual uh, that comes in. And um, overall growth characteristic, if it gets into the lawn, it's more kind of a tufted type growth characteristic if you're mowing it at a, uh, say, two to three inch type of mowing height. It will you know, turn off color being a summer annual as you go into the later fall period. The uh, Probably some other characteristics I think important is considered to be more of a coarse texture type of uh, plant, so uh, width of the leaf blade is, is relatively wide and therefore it makes it kind of noticeable in, in our lawn term. Uh, the other thing about Japanese stillcrafts is that it kind of prefers uh, more of a shaded, wet type environment. At least that's where it seems to start and then it can continue to spread. Um, either by way of seed or, or from stolen production. Like rolled leaf formation, and um, generally the leaf uh, width tends to be coarse. Now this is a small The ligule for Japanese tillcrafts is described as a very short uh, membranous ligule. You also may see some hair coming up towards the edges of the collar, uh, towards the base of the leaf blade.